I'll get going anyway, given, given time, I've only got so much time as well. So yes, trying to be as inspiring as possible, give you as much energy as possible, so that actually you go away feeling energized rather than just deflated after staring at a screen for another 45 minutes. Um, as I said, I really like Jude and I thought her open planning was brilliant. So hopefully uh, I can match that level of energy and expertise as well. So that's just a little bit about the session, a little bit about me. I run an agency called Empower. We're a small friendly agency who work with a range of small charities and some large organizations. We do digital marketing, which uh, I'll explain a bit more in a minute, but basically I'm gonna help you reach new audiences, understand how those audiences are behaving, and then basically showing off your best uh, with the delivery and services that you offer. So as we get started, what I really want you to guys to do as you're thinking through this presentation is think about these questions. So when you are online, when you're on social media or you're getting emails into your inbox, who is publishing content that you love? So are there um, newspapers or magazines or online sites that you really love or even other charities, other voluntary organizations? I'd also like you to think about where you read that content online. Are you reading it mainly on Twitter? Are you reading in your email inbox through newsletters? You go directly to the sites like The Guardian to try and find out a bit more. And then when you are consuming that content or reading those stories, what is a good reading experience for you? What, what makes up a good experience for you? And then how can you take that into your own work and think about how people would be reading about your content or, or consuming your content as well? I'd also like you to think about where you find that content. So as you're, as you're consuming that content that you love, how are you finding it? Are you finding it through social media, on Facebook? Are colleagues sending you links? Uh, is it on WhatsApp even? So there's lots of ways that people can discover that content for you. And then a few other things. Um, what email newsletters do you look forward to? Do you look forward to getting any? Are you excited about any that come into your inbox? How can you create that excitement for your audiences as well? And then what images resonate with you? What makes you stop in social media? What makes you think, yes, I want to have a look at that? And then when you actually do click through, what makes a good story? And that's ultimately stories are what we're concentrating on at the moment for this presentation. What makes a good story? How do we do that? Now, this all ties together into, I guess, what, what we would package up as digital marketing. And to set a bit of context, I'd like to just show this slide, which shows how much time we're spending online increasingly over the last decade and predicting into next year as well. And then... What is most interesting about this um, uh, graph here is the growth in mobile. So you can see the dark blue is how many people are spending, uh, how much time people are spending using their mobile devices compared to desktop. And that's something that's at the core of everything we do with digital marketing these days. When we're um, showing our beneficiaries, when we're showing our impact data, you really want to make sure that you have mobile devices at the heart of everything you do. And as we go on to look at how we create those stories and how we share them or how we communicate that impact data, you'll see that a lot of what we're thinking of is mobile first. We need to make sure our website is accessible. We need to make sure that uh, we're capturing stories and capturing video and photos that are viewable on mobile. And uh, quite often that day, uh, today, that means in a vertical landscape, so a vertical mode. So when your phone, you hold your phone up like that, things like Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and our Twitter have their own fleets as well. So everyone's getting on the kind of vertical content bandwagon. So that's something to really bear in mind to keep, keep mobile at front of mind when you are creating these beneficiary stories and impact data. Um, and then just to couch that as well, so what are people doing online? Um, so they're mainly watching lots of movies and videos. Uh, they're doing their email, they're using social media and reading the news. So this is just to give you a good idea of, of the most popular activities. And again, thinking about how you can create content that taps into this. So with a primary activity that people do on mobile being watch vid movies and videos, how can you capture more video through the work that you do? And how can you make that interesting on mobile devices? Email, lots of people are an email. Are, do you have an email newsletter? Are you sending it regularly with interesting, engaging content? because this is what people are doing online using their mobile devices. Social media, I hope a lot of you have got your own Twitter feed, your own Instagram channel. Uh, we'll be looking a bit more at that in, in more detail later on. And then news, I guess you maybe you're doing some activity around that as well, um, but people are reading newspapers online. 
Um, I think that's the context of uh, how people are using online these days, again, with a focus on mobile. And then what we do as a digital marketing agency is, is find out how to reach those users. Now, rather than just listing out all the channels that you could use, I like to plot it out on a graph like this, where um, it helps to, to show which channels are most relevant for you, depending on what the audience is trying to do. So, for example, you can see YouTube there, and it's in the bottom left quadrant, and that's where a user is not actively searching for your services, and they're a bit random, and so they're just probably relaxing, looking through YouTube, watching random videos. It's going to be hard for you to reach them. On the bottom right quadrant, you've got email, where a user's not necessarily actively searching, but they're your target customer. So if you can get people signed up to your email address and sending them emails, then you're going to be uh, much more targeted towards them. And then uh, in the middle is a big SEO one as well. And I think that's a nice place to hit as well. And that's something that we're going to be talking about here, which is where you're creating content that people can find on Google. People are actively searching for maybe volunteering opportunities or to get involved in local organizations and they fit your target customer profile. So hopefully this is a bit more useful in getting you thinking even a little bit about how it's not just a case of putting out content across all these channels. It's about thinking about where the user is and they're on their mobile device. Are they actively searching for you? Do they fit your customer profile? That kind of thing. I think um, when Sorrow and the team asked me to come up uh, with, a, with a kind of session here, one thing I wanted to get across or one thing they wanted me to think about was how can we use, uh, how can we capture beneficiary stories and communicate impact data using digital channels? And I kind of brainstormed all the different channels that we use, which we've just had on that graph back there. But thinking about which is best for voluntary organizations, which is best for you guys, because you've got so much to do anyway. You've got so much on your to-do list, along with promoting what you do using digital channels, that really focusing on the ones that are most effective for you and that you have time to do and resource to do, I think, is key. So I put this slide together, it's very text heavy. And I know, uh, slap on the wrist of me, they said don't use too much text. For this, I think it's useful because you're gonna be able to have these slides afterwards. I want to make sure that you've got these views afterwards and I'll quickly run through them. So again, email marketing I mentioned, it's really low cost to use. If you're using a, a tool like MailChimp, it's free for under 2000 subscribers. So you can email 2000 people for free. And the email actually has the highest return on investment for digital marketing. And that's because you are getting focused attention of people. Whenever you email someone a newsletter, it's coming into their inbox. They have no distraction from other tweets or other posts or other Instagram stories going around. So they get really focused attention on what you're trying to tell them. So that's why email's so good. I really like SEO as a um, way of getting people through to your website. Simply, put simply, rather than complicating it, it's all about writing about what you're doing as an organization or thinking about what audiences will be interested in, what questions they've got to ask, and just writing content that basically meets, answers those questions and meets those needs. Um, it's quite simple. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. And I think you can even get some basics right and get lots of interested people into your organizational websites. I should also emphasize video, although you might think video is resource intensive, with the proliferation of smartphones and um, how good quality the camera apps are and the microphones on, on phones, you can create some really good content using video. And these days, especially during COVID, people aren't looking for highly polished quality content. Uh, they don't need a really slick professional video. They want authenticity. They want people to tell their story. So when we're thinking about beneficiary stories when we're thinking about impact data I would argue just simply using a video recording yourself on a smartphone and just speaking authentically and speaking honestly and enthusiastically about your beneficiaries about the impact that you're making I think goes down really well again you don't need to be slick it's just authentic and I think that really connects with people and then partnerships um, a lot of what we do in digital is leverage other people's channels so you're only one organization, you, you're, you've probably only got so much time and resource in order to uh, reach new audiences. And that's why partnerships are so strong because you can leverage what the audiences they have. So it's what we're doing with superhighways. You know, they're a, a 
coalition or a network of organizations? How can you partner together to reach even more people through, through that partnership? And one common myth that I like to dispel is that social media is free. Social media is free to post and manage, but it takes up significant resources. So in terms of time and resource, it's definitely not free. Um, I would also emphasize that you uh, figure out how much uh, social media is worth doing. Is, is posting to Facebook all the time taking up a lot of time, but not actually getting much traffic or interest through to your website? Is posting to Twitter a lot taking up time? Again, what's the return you're getting from posting to social media? Now you can find out things uh, like Google Analytics, use Google Analytics to find out how many people are coming through to your website from social media. But I would argue that other channels like email marketing, like SEO are probably getting more people to your website. So it might be worth looking at more. Now to help accelerate website traffic through to you and help to get more people finding out about your beneficiary stories and the impact that you're having uh, Google Ads, I really hope that you've heard of this before, the Google Grant Scheme. I hope that many of you have applied for it and successfully got it and are using it well. But they offer $10,000 a month in free advertising. That's about £8,000. I'll put some more information later on in, in the slides uh, to have a look at, but it's definitely worth looking at. On the flip side of that, Facebook ads are a bit more expensive. Obviously, there's no free grants available, so they cost. Uh, however, they can be low cost, especially when you're targeted. So if you're looking at reaching potential volunteers in your uh, local area, if you're looking for donors or supporters, then uh, using Facebook ads does require a bit of budget, but it can be really cost effective. So again, I'm just, just trying to set the scene about um, what are the different channels you can use and how you can use them um, to both communicate beneficiary stories and communicate your impact data as well. I've summarized that kind of um, way of thinking there into this table. I really want you guys, when you're thinking about how you're using digital channels to think about these three elements. So how much resource does it take to make good, of, good use of that channel? How much budget does it take? And also how much of an expert do we need to be in that particular activity in order to uh, make it work for us? So looking at this, we can see that um, email marketing, you know, it's low resource, low budget. You need some expertise to set up an email marketing uh, newsletter, but using MailChimp, it's very easy. So arguably that's going to be the quick win for you guys and a nice, nice channel to get going. Social media, I've put resources high because I think to do it properly, it does take a lot of effort and resource. So I just want you to put that in mind. Now you might think it's different for your organization. You might don't think it doesn't take up much resource, but I just want to put that idea in your head. And then Google Ads, once you have it running, um, it doesn't take much resource to run because it's automatic. Uh, the budget is low, especially if you've got Google Grants because it's free and it does take some expertise. But again, it's uh, it, 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 once you have it up and running, it, it's fairly straightforward to, to manage. So I won't spend too long on this because I'm aware of so much time. But yeah, just, just thinking about the different ways you use channels would be, would be great. That said, when we're thinking about those digital channels. We obviously need content in order to promote on it. So the content that we uh, can gather, so what the way we communicate our beneficiary stories, the way we communicate our impact, uh, can take the form of any of this. And I know Jude is a big fan of podcasts and storytelling through audio, um, but that's one particular um, approach, but there's also video, there's blog posts, there's emails, you can use photography, uh, there's webinars you can use. So there's quite a lot of ways, different types of content you can use to communicate um, your, your stories, communicate your impact. And I, I think of different ways that you could cut these as well. So for example, by recording a video interview with someone, you can then take the audio from that video and use it as a podcast. You could also take stills from that video and use it as photography. You could take the transcript from that video and use it as a blog post and again summarizing it into email marketing copy. So I'd argue that by um, focusing on one type of content marketing like video, you can actually create lots of other types of content as well like podcasts, photography, blog posts, email marketing, all kinds of things. So emphasizing again that video might feel out of reach for a lot of people but picking up a smartphone, being authentic, um, speaking to the camera about 
the impact that you guys are having, filming a beneficiary talking through their story, you can create some really effective content uh, through that. Just to back that up, <laughs> I've uh, again put it into a table here to give you a kind of idea of um, what you what you might think about when you come to plan out how to catch that type of content. I have put video budget high and expertise high because uh, it is higher compared to a lot of the other ones, but actually depending on where you are in your uh, organization, how comfortable you are with video, it can be low. So again, I've put this out to emphasize that you don't have to cover everything and there can be hidden costs in terms of resource or budget or expertise to the undertaking certain amount of content. Um, but just think about if you're an organization and uh, hopefully you'll be able to make good use of your resources. Now, onto social media being um, a great way to communicate. It seems to be the most obvious thing that people take on. Um, it's quick and easy to get going. Lots of people use it on their personal life as well as in their professional life. Uh, so I think social media is a, a natural home for sharing content. Um, so obviously there's the main channels there, but I'm not, not going to spend time explaining that to you because I assume you know this. Uh, but again, I wanted to think, make, get you thinking about how each channel has its own challenges as well. So although Facebook is low resource, it's quite easy to post to. Actually having people see your posts is quite high budget because you need, need to pay for ads now. Uh, same with Instagram. You could say it's high resource because actually gathering those beautiful photos or Instagram stories does take a lot of resource uh, to get, uh, but once you do have it, you're, it's kind of like low budget to, or, or medium expertise to post. Um, Twitter, I've kind of put medium for everything. I think it does take a lot of time uh, to do it well. Uh, you might want to use some ads as well, so the budget is medium, and then your expertise to get the formatting right, get the right hashtags, uh, get the right features on that are quite medium as well. So there you go. I I'm, 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 think I'm drumming home the point of thinking about in each kind of area that you're, you're looking at, making sure that you're thinking about how, how it best works for you and thinking about how much time it takes. If you kind of put that all together, hopefully you're gonna have a, uh, a good uh, kind of plan or understanding of which areas you want to focus on. Now, when communicating our beneficiary stories and communicating our impact data on social media in particular, we want to focus on the social. You know, social media includes the word social for a reason, and that's because we really want to focus on people. And I think some organizations aren't great at putting people at the center of what they do, or at least what they communicate anyway. Definitely at what they do, but more about what they communicate and how that looks online on social media. So the first place to start really, if you wanna uh, use social well and communicate about the people and, and the beneficiaries, is looking at who those audiences are. Now I've listed here some free ways that you can find out about your audiences. So Facebook obviously has page insights. So on your Facebook page, we'll have information around demographics, who you've reached, who you've engaged and what locations they are. There's also a, a part of Facebook Ads Manager called Audience Insights, which is free again, but gives you more data about the UK overall. So you can segment that data in different ways and look at people's different lifestyles, the different interests. And that gives you a comparison of your audience. So your Facebook page audience compared to something else. Then you have Instagram has very similar things. I hope you've been into your Instagram in analytics and had a look, but there are some third party platforms as well that give you an insight into who your Instagram audiences is, are. Um, so IG audit, that second link is a free way to get an idea of who your audiences are. Now, Twitter has actually taken away a lot of their dem demographic data. So I've left it there anyway, because you can see um, the link to the Twitter analytics to show you how well your tweets are performing. But then you're going to want to use tools like Follow One or Twitter Audit there. And that gives you a bit more of a rounded idea of who your audience is on Twitter. And then lastly, I've put Google Analytics, which I hope most of you are running on your websites, if not all. And then Google Search Console as well. Now, these two work together to show you how people got to your website, the keywords they put into Google search in order to find your website. And then once you're, they're on your website, who those people are and what pages they're looking at. So using these tools, you can put together quite a good idea of who your audience is, and that's gonna help you create um, better content because you'll be able to keep those in mind as you go through to um, yeah, communicating your impact. Now, 
when you do go to communicate your impact, one uh, great way to think about it is using a ladder of engagement. So when we're uh, posting to social media, we want to make sure that we are moving people from one at the top, so liking a post, down to number six, uh, where they become an advocate for your organization. And so everything we're doing as we communicate again and again with people through our different channels is trying to move them through from liking and sharing into joining in conversations or commenting in order to get down to where real influence and real change happens which is responding and engaging and advocating for you. So number five, you could imagine is someone who's signing up to volunteer with you, for example. So this ladder of engagement is a useful framework to keep in mind when you're uh, trying to think about how best to engage your audiences. Now, to help facilitate that, we need to create a balance. So this presentation is all about how we communicate our beneficiaries, beneficiary stories, how we communicate our impact data. But we can't just ask all the time for, or, or for donations, for volunteers, for support. It needs to be balanced with giving. So we need to give value to um, our audiences. And so it needs to be heavily weighted towards giving value as well. So we need to build relationships and you'll need to build community and you'll need to be able to build conversation. So even though you will want to communicate your beneficiary stories, you will want to communicate the impact that you're making. You really do need to keep in mind that you need to balance it out with giving. What's the value that you're giving to those people? And so this is a healthy balance when you come to posting. So what do the gifts look like? So when you give, um, basically, this is about communicating your stories. So here we, on the right hand side, we have a, an example from a housing association. There's someone who won an award, it's presenting the human, the beneficiary, the person there uh, nice and clearly. It's authentic, it's not polished, it's just what's happening. And um, it just, it, it tells a quick story as to how well someone has done through the support of this housing, housing association. So, yeah. again, sorry, go ahead. No, okay. <laughs> um, a lot of the time when we're communicating, obviously you want to use images and videos, but I think you also need to think about how you can be positive in the, in the communications that you have, uh, that you're making. Um, lots of people are using social media in order to relax, in order to escape, in order to find entertainment. And it can be quite uh, jarring to have um, perhaps a negative tone uh, of a beneficiary through that. It's much more inspirational and engaging on social media to showcase someone who's achieved something uh, through your support, through the support of your organization and how um, they've then gone on to achieve great things. And I think that's showing the impact in a positive way. And again, how can you tie that back to provide value to someone who's seen these posts? How can you uh, then get them involved? Can you encourage them to say congratulations? Can you encourage them to share this with other people who might benefit from the support? And one final thing to mention is all of the social media platforms these days are not so keen on people putting in outbound links. So links going off, off the platform, for example. Your post would do much better if it's just... Uh, content captured on the or posted on the platform itself uh, without any links on it because Twitter, Facebook, Instagram recognizes that you're keeping people on the platform and will reward you for that. So don't often have to have a call to action at the end. It can just be a story captured for its sake on uh, in a post like this. When you do come to us, though, uh, there are some well tried and tested methods for making sure that people do uh, take notice, do take action. So what we um, like to, how we like to structure our posts here when we're communicating our beneficiary stories or the impact we're making is the hook narrative call to action framework. So the hook in this post on the right hand side as an example is that 80% of people who are homeless have experienced child trauma, childhood trauma. So that the hook is a stat to bring people in. Then we have a narrative about why that matters, the impact that we're making, and quite simply that leads on to a call to action. You can obviously be quite creative in how you manage that framework or how you, you create copy around it, uh, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of the kind of framework that we're using. Um, we really want to tie 
the ask that we're having to our objectives as an organization. Um, so it's quite clear here, the link between what we're asking for people to do, to donate, to donate ask, and how that we will then use that, this housing association uses that in order to help people. Uh, it's an ask as well, it's not a take, it's not about giving, it's about please helping us, asking them to do it. Um, this time as well, because this is your 20% balance say, it is okay obviously to link with offline actions, you can link to your donation page, um, it's absolutely fair enough to do that and as long as you're being balanced that's um, fine to do. Um, now, on that ladder of engagement, one thing we wanted people to do was share. The reason sharing is so, um, such as um, such a much needed thing to happen on social media, especially these days, is that the social network effect where friends of friends get exposed to your content, and that's how you grow your audience. It's all done through sharing. So it's retweeting, it's sharing, it's liking, it's that kind of thing. Now, there was a great study done, uh, it must be nearly um, a decade ago now by the New York Times, and they have a famous study about why people share. And these are the top five reasons here, and I think this is really interesting for uh, organisations like yourselves to think about, because you hopefully tick a lot of these boxes. So people want to share because they want to get the word out about the causes they support and the issues they care about. So if you can tap into that and encourage people to share, uh, if they care about your cause and care about the work you're doing, encourage them to share, to shout about you, uh, that's really powerful and makes people share your stuff on social media. Some of it's about relationships, so it's about people staying in touch with each other. So as a brand organisation, I think that's quite different, uh, difficult because you're a, um, you're a logo, you're a brand, you're not a person when you're managing your um, organizational social media accounts but when you're an individual when you're a human when you're a person you're trying to help each other you're trying to help someone uh, find out more about volunteering get involved or you're celebrating someone's achievements like we saw in that previous example uh, then that's a great way to grow and nourish relationships um a few others here about defining ourselves to others i think um when people share good news or share volunteering opportunities they are saying to others, this is the kind of thing I care about. This is the kind of thing that I think is important. And they are like, what could be called virtue signaling. They're, they're showing how virtuous they are by sharing. I wouldn't be afraid to tap into that. Uh, just two others to touch on briefly, self-fulfillment. So they feel more involved in the world when, they, when people share uh, news and information that they care about. And then again, being valuable and entertaining content to others. So sharing stuff because it's good news or helps other people or encourages action. So yeah, do look up that study if you want. Uh, it's really interesting to kind of tap into that. And obviously when you're sharing information about your beneficiaries and about your impact, you want people to share, uh, so try and think about these, core, uh, th these reasons why people shared to encourage people to share uh, your content as well. Now, I wanted to move into some examples of what other organizations are doing in order to uh, communicate their beneficiary stories and their impact data. And um, I think these are the top takeaways from what's working right now. So video, I've emphasized it throughout this. I've emphasized that you don't need to be highly polished, doesn't need to be um, slick, it can just be picking up your mobile phone or records on your laptop. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, highly polished. It can be very nice and quick and easy. People just want the authenticity and in the moment. And I think that's what's led to the rise in ephemeral or like stories content. So Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and now Twitter have stories as well. It's kind of authentic. It's in the moment. Uh, it's, trying, it's trying to capture what's actually happening now rather than something that's kind of constructed or fabricated. So that's why it's doing well and obviously combined video stories the rise of mobile all kind of fits together um and then that's the kind of public sharing content that's happening i should also actually probably put tiktok in there as well although i'm not going to touch on tiktok but as part of that same success story around tiktok is that it's mobile first it's all about stories and ephemeral content um yeah um just to give a few examples of, of organizations that I think are working really well. So in, in a place like the Twitter feed, the Facebook feed, the Instagram feed, 
I think this is a really great profile of an organization sharing beneficiary stories or sharing their impact uh, using great visual content. So on the left hand side, you can see it's uh, a doctor working with some uh, children. She's a pediatrician. The story here is excellent. It talks about who she is, what she's doing, uh, and then sits a wider context about what's happening across Europe. The good thing about Instagram is there's not often a call to action. It's often just a story captured uh, in one post. And if you do that again and again, you can build up excellent audiences who will uh, take the time to go and find out more about your organization. So on the right hand side, you can see here, 95% of the um, photos feature a person, a person's face near the camera, even the, even the illustrations at the bottom have that. And I think this is a good example of what you're trying to achieve there. It's a story captured in one single post. It's about people, it's putting people at the forefront, it's got their faces right there. And I think the reason this works well is because people are on Instagram, as an example, in order to connect with other people, build relationships, find out what's happening in the world. And this is the way to do it. So if you do have an Instagram profile, I'd look back at the feed, see how much, how many times you're featuring people, how many stories you're telling on each post. And if you're not, how can you uh, work to get more beneficiary stories? How can you work to get more of these photos? I think alongside that, you've got stories, um, which um, I'm picking up on here because I think Hopefully a lot of you have uh, a good idea of how to run an Instagram feed or how to get photos, but stories are a bit more of a challenge. Now, with the organizations we're working with, um, a lot of the stories are quite simple to construct. They don't need to be fancy. They can be quite similar to the content you're creating in the feed. So for, there's a few examples here, and I think I've linked through to each of these so you can see examples when you click on them, but they can be polished. But if you look at this, how this has been put together, it's a photo in this vertical format, in the mobile format, with clean white text over the top. Again, it's focusing on people. It's not focusing on abstract objects or places or, uh, or shapes or whatever. It's got people at the forefront of it. Um, the story is told in uh, a sequence. So for example, you could have a, a sequence of four here, which is just four lines of copy to tell the story. Again, you can think back to the uh, framework I used earlier, which was Hook. So on the left-hand side, we have she helps to deliver life-saving care and babies to mothers. And then it's the story. So now she is a mother to three children. And then the call to action, read the story via link in our bio. So that three there could be a kind of um, story using the hook narrative call to action formula. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's concentrating on people's photos first with simple text over the top. And then on the flip side of that, I guess you can have more live and authentic and interactive style stories, which is, is similar to video where you're picking up your phone, you're just shooting people talking or, or an event taking place. And you're, and you're snapping away or shooting away using that. And then simply, again, just posting uh, some text around the edge. I would think, you, you know, you can, you can think heavily about it and do this kind of thing, or you can be quick and authentic and honest and just be uh, picking up your phone and pointing and shooting this kind of thing. I think it, it, it's easy to, easier to do this kind of quicker picking up and shooting aspect. And I think you just need the confidence and the bravery to uh, yeah, capture that moment and be confident to post it. So if you are out and about and you are able to do that, then uh, yeah, there's some really great content you can use there. I've put some information here about planning stories to help you out, um, thinking about six to eight shots, a mix of videos and photos. And again, that's just some ideas there to help you plan it out. And then some ideas about what makes a good story. So when you, you are capturing uh, your beneficiary uh, stories, when you are communicating your impact, this is for Instagram stories as an example, but I, I don't see why not it can't uh, count for all of the content that you're creating and capturing. Um, so it's concise. So you want to keep it clear, simple, sharp. And um, there's lots of distractions online. There's lots of things happening on social media. So keeping it clear, short and concise is a great way to do that. Think about creative angles and different perspectives. Uh, so again, following the action with your camera there, panning the camera. So although we are shooting a video, you don't have to just stick in one place. 
And I think I've mentioned this before, but being real and in, in the moment. So your story should be authentic. They shouldn't be constructed. And uh, hopefully that should make your life easier because it's just pointing and shooting rather than overthinking it. It's meant to be a reflection of reality and that's what people engage with. And I think people can tell if something's been um, pol too polished. They want to see the authentic story and they want to see the people behind the story. Um, there obviously are lots of tools available on each of these platforms. Uh, Instagram in particular has loads of filters, uh, loads of stickers, loads of uh, kind of visual elements you can use to liven up a story. I'd have a look through them, keep playing with it in your personal time, keep playing with it with your stories that you post on your uh, organisational profiles. You can get some really interesting ways to liven up what, what could be seen as a simple, uh, simple story. I've also put in a, a framework we use here where it's just a simple two column framework where on the left hand side we have an idea of what we're trying to capture. If we're trying to plan a story on the right hand side we have the text and visuals to go over the top. So you get an idea of how it can be quite simple. This is what we want to show, this is what we want to communicate, this is the text we're going to use. So if you are planning something more in depth uh, around a beneficiary story or around communicating your impact then this is a tool that might help as well. Um, I also wanted to finish off with just a few links. Um, there's loads of free tools and resources out there. So you might be wondering through this, how do we actually go out and get that content? Or I can't go out because of COVID. We can't see our volunteers face to face. How do I actually get content to use? Um, these are a few links to websites that have free video and photos, uh, like stock footage for you to use. So um, pexels.com, unsplash.com and Pixabay. Uh, I've linked to them each there. Uh, they're all license free to use. You don't have to pay to use these photos. You don't have to tell them how they're being used. You don't have to attribute the photos. Um, basically, they're free to use. They have, uh, in combination of these three, have tens of thousands of photos for you to use. Um, you can pretty much search for anything and come up with uh, a nice looking photo. So here I was looking for older people. I was working with an older people's charity and uh, came up with some really nice photos that look authentic, look honest, and don't look terribly like stock photos. So worth having a look at those if you want. If you do need some design help as well, so you don't have to use Photoshop, there's lots of template tools at the moment. So canva.com is one that comes up a lot. It can help you create Instagram posts you can see here, other social media posts you can see. So it's got pre-made templates for you that are easy to edit and you edit them online and you, you can just quickly and easily change photos, change the copy to create your own um, assets. Um, there's also a photo editing tool, a free photo editing tool called Pixlr. It's basically meant to be a free version of Photoshop and in the cloud, so you can use it online. So if you want to do any photo editing, then that's a really good free tool to use as well. So they're the kind of go-to places we have if, we want, if we're struggling to find content, struggling to find stories, we go to these places instead. Uh, I'm going to emphasize that once you have your impact stories, once you have your beneficiary stories captured, uh, do have a look at Google Ads because it is a free way of getting content out there. And I've put a link to a post there in case you didn't know, but I think the Super Highways guys do know about it, do push it as well. It is free completely, so do go and have a look at it. And if you're not using it already, then please do take a look. Um, and then, yeah, I was just thinking about next steps. So you've got your beneficiaries data, you've worked out how you're going to communicate it, what digital channels you're going to use. Uh, then I think it's worth thinking through just some next steps. So with that, with those stories, with that data, what the objectives, what you're trying to achieve with it, it might be recruit more volunteers, it might be grow your social media audiences to have more people come, uh, more people share your content. So think about that. I think about community as well. So the stories we're sharing, the content that we're sharing is all about building a community. And it's no good just posting out, again, the ask all the time. It's about creating conversations, about building relationships. And that's the purpose of social media as an example, is building community. So thinking about that. Uh, I mentioned towards the beginning as well about different types of content you could create. So when you do create a video, how can that be used in different ways? How can you uh, extract the audio to become a podcast? Can you take stills from the video to become um, a photo to post to social media? Uh, can you use the transcripts of a video in order to become a blog post? So think about that. Um, 
You obviously need to think about growth as well. Uh, think about how, you know, there's no point putting all this effort into creating content if there's no one there to actually consume it. So do think about how you can grow your channels as well, at least to a fair foundation of a good community. And then one thing we spend a lot of time doing is analyzing the data. So I, I link to those audience insight tools. Each platform has their own. So there's Facebook insights, there's Twitter analytics, and then you can back that up with things like Google Analytics and Google Search Console, uh, which are all free tools and give you insight into how people are discovering your organization, how they're responding to the beneficiary stories and if that and how they're looking at the uh, kind of impact that you're communicating. So they're just some some ideas and next steps to think about. Um, I think I was going to leave some time for questions and uh, obviously we started a little bit late and there's another session happening soon. So I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I just want to yeah say thank you for listening.